You know, it's funny, I've made a lot of videos about games on the eShop worth buying, and probably too many videos because I'm, I'm out of games. I've talked about them all already. I'm gonna have to look to the future. This video is filled with fun, exciting games coming to the eShop really soon. Some in just a week or so. Last weekend, I went to PAX with my wife Kim and a bunch of my friends, and we got to a hands-on experience with all of these games, and they're so good. If you've seen my eShop series, it's gonna be just like that, but I'm gonna splice in a bunch of vlogging and fun that I had at PAX around each of the games that I talk about today. So this is 10 eShop games games coming to Switch really soon. Actually, I'm lying. It's more like 13 or 14 games. 10 just sounded better for the title, but I played so much. I have so much to talk about. I'm just gonna shut up and get into it. I've never been to PAX East before. It is a giant convention in Boston filled with video games, indie teams, things to buy. I'm very excited. It's about a six hour drive for Kim and I. So we gotta get going early if we wanna get there in time to pick up our bad we are officially in Massachusetts. Okay, we're finally in Boston and we meet up with Scoot and Fried Biscuits first. I can't wait to meet some of my favorite friends here. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Cut. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank oh you. My god. Oh my god, Scootish from twitch.tv forward slash Scootish! Wolfden! Alright. Hey Bingle. Hey. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> We gotta go get our badges before it's too late. It's, we got like half an hour, all right. And then as we're walking to PAX, who do we see already walking back from PAX on the other side of the street? It's Bob and Hannah. And they were also filming. So it was like a double filmception from across the street. We were just going to PAX to pick up our badges. I didn't think we were gonna see anything of the actual show floor, but right at the front, they had the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom display. Going into PAX, Nintendo said they weren't bringing anything Zelda related, so just the fact that this was here was still really cool to see. I don't think I really have to tell you guys about Tears of the Kingdom. We're obviously all super excited for this to release. As soon as it drops, I'm gonna be live streaming it on Twitch, probably my entire playthrough. Obviously, one of the most exciting games of my life. But we're here to focus on these cute indie gems coming to the eShop. So PAX is closed, but we can take a look out into the empty venue and it is massive. And it's just filled with these booths and games and lights. <laughs> it looks insane. I haven't mentioned this yet, but Kim and I have been battling a lot of anxiety. And as I stood here, I was just imagining the amount of people that might be on the floor. And that didn't sit well with me, but the actual sight of everything there itself was really cool. Okay, it's day one and it's very packed. And the fact that we're even attempting this, I'm proud of us. It's packed. It's packed. I was trying to be <laughs> Thank sweet. Thank God, I thought that she, same joke. And she made a joke. All right, we got a signing in half an hour. Let's get down there. Bob and I had to go and do a fan signing, which was a ton of fun. We were stood there for like an hour and a half meeting so many people. It was technically a Nintendo fan signing, although the sign did say Wolf Den slash Nintendo. Maybe I was just crashing his signing. I'm not sure what happened there. But it was so much fun getting to meet some of you guys. This whole weekend was a blast meeting people. But anyway, finally, our first game, I beelined to one of the ones I wanted to play so badly, and that was Rift of the Necro Dance. That is the same team behind Crypt of the Necro Dancer, and they even bought a huge add-on pack called Crypt of the Necro Dancer Synch Syn Syn Synchrony? Am I pronouncing that correctly? So Rift is a spin-off of the Necro Dancer games, which those games are notorious for their incredible soundtracks and kick-ass music. Many of us played Cadence of Hyrule, and that's the same team. In fact, it's a spin-off of Crypt of the Necro Dancer, just reskinned with Zelda. Rift changes up the rhythm game genre and heads to a classic guitar hero-esque format. And at first glance, I wondered what was going to make this one special and stand out from the crowd. But right as I started playing, suddenly all the pieces started to fall into place. Pun not intended, because that's kind of what you do in the game. Because you don't just hit notes and beats on the timeline like you would a guitar hero game, but you're actually attacking enemies. And sometimes enemies will have extra health, which makes them go back up the timeline, and you need to hit them again. And different enemy types behave differently. Bats will not only go back up the timeline, but they'll flutter side to side quickly, or skeletons will dance their little butts back up the way of the timeline. So this makes the gameplay really frantic, with quick and sudden changes to the way you 
thought you would have to play the song, but it all blends perfectly on the beat with the incredible music. It also gives me WarioWare vibes in that after each traditional battle, there are rhythm-based mini games like yoga stretching or dodging attacks in a boss battle style. I had a lot of fun playing this one and I look forward to it releasing as well as the Crypt of the Necrodancer DLC. Also, while I was at their booth, I went ahead and grabbed a little Cadence figurine. They were like 20 bucks each. Yeah, look at this. It was like 20 bucks. It's so cool. But moving on, right next to this little group of games, there was one I have been dying to get my hands on, and that's WrestleQuest. I love RPGs, but I'm also a massive wrestling fan. Here's a picture with me and Ethan Page from AEW. We're friends. I could message him right now and say, hey, you don't believe me? I said, so how you doing? Everything good? We'll see how long it takes him to reply. Anyway, WrestleQuest. I've been keeping tabs on this one for a while. I've even been putting it in my upcoming Switch game videos because I've been so excited. I was lucky enough to play this one at PAX with the developer watching over my shoulder. No pressure. Took like two seconds. We're besties. What I loved most about my time playing was the turn-based combat within the ring. It's a wrestle JRPG, but then the really nice feedback loop of uh, using wrestling to solve one of the problems with JRPG. RPG design that you have to solve and overcome, which is first order optimal strategies. As much as you have to uh, pick the performant move, you also have to put on a good show and use good variety. Otherwise you start getting penalized or you don't get the buffs and stuff like that. I mean, you shouldn't just spam the same move over and over because just like if you're watching Adam Cole versus Kenny Omega, it wouldn't be very interesting if Adam Cole just kept lowering the boom the whole match while Kenny Omega kept trying to hit the one winging angel again and again and again and again. Although honestly, that might actually be interesting. I would, I would watch that. I would still watch that. I like that once I selected a move, I had an extra option of hitting another one if the opponent bounced off the ropes. At that point, it's all done with quick time button presses, and that really helps the match feel like it's flowing. There's tag teams, taunts, learning new moves, of course, unlocking more wrestlers to fight with you. You can even explore outside the ring too, which gives me a lot of Stardew Valley vibes with its art style. I love the art style. It's very uh, Stardew-esque. Thank you. Um, it's gone through like some iteration over time. Uh, the original spec for it was actually a retro project like very literally going to be on a SNES cartridge. Yeah, I don't even know if we could fit the main character on a SNES cartridge now with the number okay. of sprites that he has. With it being such a long game, I'm sure there is a lot to do and so much more to explore. Would you say it's a game that anyone can play or just wrestling fans? We've had the feedback from JRPG fans saying that they're checking out wrestling now and okay. also wrestling fans saying that this was their first JRPG and they're checking it out now. Wow, that's really cool. I love that. They even allowed me <laughs> to step in the wrestling ring that they had brought. This was a real wrestling ring that wrestlers were wrestling in through the weekend. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. <laughs> I just got in. I got to stand in there and, and wave a title around. I really regretted wearing what essentially was a crop top because every time I lifted my arms up, you'd see my belly button. Felt a little risque, but it was fine. I had a good time. As Kim and I were walking around looking for the next games to play, we stumbled on the Fan Gamer booth. I love a lot of Fan Gamer stuff. A lot of special edition Switch games games get released via Fangamer. And here, we had to buy this plushed Bunga from Bug Snacks. It was a game that Kim and I played together and we adored it a lot. All right, but after that, we turned a corner and we found two games. We actually found the Chucklefish booth and I love their games. They made Eastwood, which I reviewed and I love that. But they have here Wargroove 2 and Wild Frost. So Wargroove took the Switch by storm when it released in 2019. It's similar to games like Advanced Wars and the Fire Emblem series. It even won awards for best strategy game and in general was received extremely positively. I love the pixel art style, the multiplayer PvP, the co-op modes, even the campaign editing tool. This time around, looks like we got pirates and a kraken. Then Wild Frost. I've had my eye on this Wild Frost game for a while. I love card games. I'll play any kind of card game. It looks really fun. It reminds me of Grindstone, but I don't think they're related at all. I've been trying to play this all this weekend, but there's been people on it the whole time, but I gotta talk about it anyway. It releases in like a week or something, and it looks really good. I love the art style, and you guys know I'm a sucker for a good card game. I have a stupid amount of hours on Marvel Snap on this thing. You don't want to know about it. Wild Frost is a tactical roguelike deck builder where you battle your way up a mountain while building the strongest deck possible. If you played a rogue like before, you know that means if you lose, you have to start again, but you can use any of your rewards you earned on your run to build a stronger deck and try again. And I got a really good feeling about this one. Okay, so while we're walking around the PAX floor, 
I got a tweet pop on my phone from one of my other best friends, Donkey. Okay, I don't actually know Donkey, but he tweeted that he was at PAX and he brought his game Animal Well. So of course I wanted to play that. It's Big Mode's first game. I also wanted to try and meet Donkey, so we scurried over there. Animal Well is a 2D platformer Metroidvania with a dense interconnected labyrinth to explore. So yeah, what really impressed me was the game didn't need constant pop-up tutorial screens or how to play guides. I liked that it didn't tell me anything. No instructions, no tutorial. It's just like, figure it out. Yeah. It was just intuitive and confident in its own game design, which reminds me a lot of classic Nintendo games. The small details like light bouncing off of moving platforms or the way water droplets impact with the wells of water, it really makes the game stand out visually. But yeah, I didn't get to play it for too long, mostly because I didn't want to take up space on too many of these games for too long, but also because people started saying, it's Donkey, Donkey's over there. And I like peered over the top of the monitor. And I was like, oh, I gotta go see him. That said, uh, not much was said. Donkey is a man of very few words. So when's the game coming out? The game is coming out uh, winter. Okay. This is the greatest game ever created. This is the only video game that you should ever play again. And then looked at me blankly, <laughs> kind of panicked, told him I was a big fan. I do actually want to talk to you. I'm a big fan. So I actually have a huge fan. I've been watching your channel for a long time now. And if you're watching this donkey for the third time, I'm a big fan. <laughs> There's one more game that I'm scheduled in to play for Friday. It's just not at PAX itself. It's across the street in a hotel, which when I found that out seemed very sketchy, but Bob told me this is something that happens all the time where a lot of these indie teams, they can't afford actual floor space. So they just rent out like a big suite in a hotel across across the street and they set up there. So to make sure that I didn't get moited, Kim, Scoot, and Biscuits came with me and we all went up to play Bread and Fred. Bread and Fred was a heavily talked about game leading up to the weekend, at least with my group of friends. We all wanted to make sure we played it as it just looks like one of those games that will blow up on Twitch and YouTube when it releases. It's a two player game where you play as two penguins bound together by a very short rope. Help, help, no one stop jumping. <laughs> You need to work together to climb up a mountain by coordinating jumps, swinging each other, <laughs> grappling walls, and more. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, what do we do now? Yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> it is incredibly frustrating in a way that is intended and in a way I don't know if I would be able to handle for a full playthrough. Nope. No, 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 no. <laughs> I feel like you did that on purpose. I did bit. not, I did it! I feel like you did. But that is the point of this game. How would you describe the game to somebody that wants to play it? So, uh, do you know games like getting over it or jumping? Yes. So that- One small slip up can cost you a lot of progress as you fall, slip, and slide all the way back to where you started. <laughs> I got pulled backwards. <laughs> no, 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 no! Fred is very upset. <laughs> I think that made it a little bit more frustrating than it would have been normally is having the guy that made the game over your shoulder laughing at you constantly every time you mess up. I'm glad they were having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I'm not. When he was done laughing his ass off, he showed us the single player mode where you use a pet rock instead and you just kind of chuck it at places. It actually looked a lot harder than trying to do it with two people, but it was pretty funny. Making us feel very inferior when we were done he even showed us on his phone a clip of a speedrunner. It was insane. It was one guy, two controllers, controlling both penguins. I don't even understand how the speedrunning community figures this stuff out. It's close to how we were playing. That, that is... The, almost the same. It took one guy literally seconds to do something that was going to take Scoot and I hours. Okay, I lied. There is one more thing we did on the show floor. We went to the Devolver Digital booth, which was insane. The backside of it was a full cathedral, Cult of the Lamb, candles everywhere. It was incredible. There's Cult of the Lamb DLC coming as well. I didn't get to play that, but I love the game. I, I watched some gameplay of it. The other side of their booth was like an old 1950s movie theater where they were selling merch. It just looked so cool. I love the guys over there at Devolver Digital. I've been working with them for a long time, doing the eShop reviews and a bunch of other stuff. And I even got to meet Clara, the head of PR, who gives me a lot of the codes for the games. I've been working with her for years now. Oh, and then Kim and I saw a Last of Us PC, and that looked pretty cool. But anyway, bedtime. They say Boston is the city of opportunity. And today, I'm creating my own. <laughs>
watch this. Call that the flippy dippy. Day two, baby. Okay, day two, Saturday. The crowds weren't too bad day one on Friday, I guess because a lot of people might've been at work. Saturday, people have the day off work and it was busy. When Kim and I first walked down to the floor, almost immediately we had to take a step out. And our anxiety bubbled over a little bit. We needed to have a breather. But fortunately, after the first breather we took, we kind of just calmed down and then we plowed right back in and we played so many games. The first one was my time at Sandrock. My Time at Sandrock is the second game in the My Time series, with the first being My Time at Porsche, or Portia, I can't say words. And that game was a fairly popular Switch release. They're both sandbox simulation RPGs, and they remind me of like a 3D Stardew Valley. They have farming, building, romanceable characters, you know, that stuff. Stardew Valley stuff. Sandrock takes place on a map 40% larger than Porsche, and looks to dive even deeper into the mechanics that made Porsche so popular, but I didn't actually get to play by my time at Sandrock, so I can't tell you much about it. The demo that they set up here was this weird in-game event. I had to scurry around and try and pick up presents falling from a blimp before other NPC characters got them. The idea was cool because when I picked up enough presents, he gave me a real-life stamp on a real-life piece of paper and said, take this to blah 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 and you'll get a prize. And I was like, that's cool. Never found out where I was supposed to take the piece of paper and I never actually got to play the game. Just this weird event. So I can't tell you much about it, but but, um, it's a thing. <laughs> Speaking of games I didn't get to play, the same area had a ton of games that only had one stall each and I just couldn't find time to get on them. But man, there was one called Extremely Powerful Capybaras, which I hope comes to Switch because it looks like a multiplayer version of Vampire Survivors and it just looks really cute and fun. And then the other ones in this area were like Goodbye World, The Courier, Blade Assault, and then Gory Cuddly Carnage. I wanted to try and sneak in here, but there was a kid playing for like forever. I will say though, this little guy was cracked at the game. It was making the gameplay footage look really sick, and at least that I appreciated while I was filming. I want to talk about this game anyway, because you'll see why. It looks wild. I'm actually shocked that this one's coming to the Switch, because visually, it looks a little too impressive for the console. Especially with how fast-paced the action is. I would call this one a hack and slash, but the devs are calling it a skate and slash, where you play as an adorable murder cat in a world of extreme toys and cute corruption with loads of blood, dismemberment, glitter, and fur. Are you convinced yet? Because I am. The world design is sick. It's like a cyberpunk, apocalyptic. It's hard not to get stray vibes off of it too, but that could also just be the fact that you're playing as a cat. Even the music in the trailer slaps and the gameplay, damn it, hack and slash is my favorite genre of game and you're adding a kitty into the mix? I mean, my wallet is upstairs, otherwise I would be pulling it out for a gag right now. And then, Kim and I I got some cherry shaved ice. I know it's not a video game, but it tasted good and I wanted to let you know about it. You know, it's funny, Bob and I spent all of Friday morning at the Toxic Crusaders booth because that's where our signing was. This game's being published and developed by our YouTube MCN. This is like the people we work with and they're making a Toxic Crusaders game. And we never got to play it because it was so packed. But thankfully, a benefit of working with them so closely is they just sent me the game so I can still talk about it. So initially, Toxic Crusaders was a Game Boy beat-em-up, shoot-em-up game based on the cartoon series by the same name. But recently, Retroware managed to acquire the rights to the franchise and wanted to bring back the beat-em-up in a bright, colorful, and fun way. And I gotta tell ya, that theme song is really catchy. After having to sit for an hour and a half during a signing and listen to it loop on repeat, it is stuck in my brain. Toxic Crusaders, Toxic Crusaders. Help. There's seven playable characters and you can have four players beating their way through the streets at once. If you enjoyed the recently released TMNT Shredder's Revenge, you'll probably know what you're in for here and love it just as much. Each character has their own unique moves and powers. There's comic book cutscenes featuring the voices of Team Four Star and visually it looks right at home on an old 90s arcade machine. While we're talking about games that were on the floor that we didn't get to play, but the dev was nice enough to send us the game in after the fact 
so I could play this one at home too, Elsie. So Elsie is actually Gerard the Completionist's game. We did have him on our Nintendo podcast episode recently, which was easily my favorite episode of the podcast we've ever done. But anyway, we talked about his game. Gerard described the game as Dead Cells meets Mega Man, but I'd also throw in Risk of Rain, just because of the insane amount of items and abilities you can get and stack. It's a roguelike, and as you platform around destroying enemies, you pick up more and more items and weapons and abilities, and also you level up as you play, so you can upgrade your abilities even further. At the top of your screen, you'll see all the upgrades and items you've stacked. And just like Risk of Rain, it can start getting really crazy as you soup yourself up to insane levels. I also appreciate there's a parry button, which lets you skip damage altogether. And you can even parry while dashing if you want to dash through attacks or hazards. I'm looking forward to seeing this game finished. So, quick story, the Mario van. They made the Mario van, and now it's here at PAX, and we got to go see it, and the keys were in it. And Scoot and I tried to open the door, and we had a moment where we were like, we could steal the Mario van right now. The keys are in the ignition. We're thieving. We could well, literally just- back, So it would also be a kidnapping, so maybe don't. And then, my standout of the weekend was Mina the Hollower. I had Celia from Yacht Club Games talking me through this one and watching over my shoulder and laughing at my failure. Celia and I have also been friends for a while. She's been on my podcast twice now talking about upcoming games like this one. And it was just, again, awesome to meet someone that I've been working with online for so long, especially in like the indie space. I had so much fun coming here and, and hanging out with everybody. It was so good. Sorry for the tangent. You guys have probably heard of this one already, especially if you love Hollow Knight. It's Yacht Club Games' next big project. So, Me and the Hollower is our love letter to the Game Boy Color. It's a top-down action adventure that takes inspiration for some of our favorite games like Castlevania, Bloodborne, and Link's Awakening. They've really meshed all of that together in a way that really, it does feel like the brainchild of all three. So for Zelda, I would say um, it does have like similarities like when exploring the hub, doing side quests and exploring the village, but the combat is definitely gonna be more of Castlevania and Bloodborne. So you will have to strategize, you will have to make enemies aggro. So when you do die, you lose your sparks, but like Bloodborne, you can go pick them up again. Okay. For me, when I think of Game Boy games, I don't often think of big, expansive worlds, but that was the feeling I was getting while playing Mina. There are a ton of secrets around the levels, and Celia kept guiding me towards them, which was nice. You should try hollowing down and see what happens. Whoa. Oh my god. You want to try something else to do? Hit that wall right there, left, right there. Whoa! Oh my gosh, I got all the I know, right? It's like I, you know, we made it or something. Oh, and Celia even told us that Switch is getting a physical release. So that's some fantastic news because a lot of these indies are usually only digital, but not Mina. We're getting a full physical. Oh, so I found Bob's clone and I, it was just some really nice guy who I legitimately thought was Bob as he walked past. But I took a photo with him and I posted it on Twitter and like no one even realized for a long time until I revealed the truth that it wasn't actually Bob. And I got a photo with him and Bob. It was a fake Bob. It was Bob, Bob clone, Bob too. Bizarro Bob. I also didn't mention this, but the first thing we actually did at PAX on day one was walk down to this booth that was selling these big mystery boxes. And I spent $200 buying three mystery boxes, two Zelda ones and a Supernatural one for Kim. I didn't know they were gonna be that expensive. Otherwise I would not have even like got anywhere near the register. We opened two of them in the hotel room and they were awful. All right, we got a, uh, oh, we got a, we got something. We got a blankie. It's uh, a full size blankie. A very blurry, <laughs> scratchy, smells like, <laughs> smells like shoes blankie. We got a pin. I see a water bottle. Well, Kim's excited for what is easily the lightest water bottle I have ever felt. I don't know why you gotta be mean to him. You haven't even seen him yet. Waffle? Okay. A little a bum bag. No. No? No. That is very cheap. This has definitely been a really bad idea. And then the window showed this, which I could already tell was horribly printed. And then a book. Yeah, this is fine. I have no problem with this. This is actually, this actually feels quality. This was $60. Yeah, I don't know what you did that for. Oh, you think yours is going to be any better? Yeah, I do. <laughs> so it's, it's, Three makeup bags. 
Just three bags? Oh my god. We were robbed. It was that bad and cheap and knockoff and awful. I didn't get to open this one because it was in Bob's room all weekend because I put it on the podcast set that we had made. And I wanted to open it now. This is the Breath of the Wild Zelda Collector's Box. Okay, this one has a drink thing. Okay, this isn't even real wood. This is plastic. If this was leather and this was wood, this would be sick. Then we have a bento style snack box. Champion's pin set. We've got some Zelda stickers. Yeah, this one's actually okay. Oh, this journal's pretty nice too. This one's definitely the best out of all, like the other ones are gone. We threw the other ones away. So my $200 of value is dependent on this box right now. This is actually, yeah, this is like fake leather, but it is actually very leathery. Yeah, this is nice. This is a nice little book actually. Oh, we got a pen to write in the book with. And then I think the last thing is it like a satchel? It feels a bit cheap, but it's big and it's honestly better than any of the other bags that came with the other one. Is it worth 65-ish dollars? Heck no. But at least there's something of value in it. Okay. Oh, no. I just need to know, was there any games at PAX that you saw that you... There was the, the dog one. Oh no, not puppy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my god. Puppy, can you hop down, please? No, At least say hello to everybody. Hello. No, I can't, and I won't. The, the, po the popper. I'm actually remembering oh. just now, I oh, wanted to game. talk <laughs> about paparazzi. Can you kind of like explain it a little? You go around and you take pictures of the dogs, but the dogs, they don't really walk so much as they like South Park character bounce across the street. That's very nice. Fun. It is fun. And like the different areas have like different dogs. There's like this one area, like, all the dogs are on scooters and you have to like- Do you get points for taking pictures of the dogs? Yeah, but there's like special missions. Oh, can you get me a picture of a dog uh, playing with a bone? Can you get a picture of a dog on a scooter? It's just like, it's dumb, but it's fun. <laughs> okay. That's it, thank you. Okay. You want to ask Big D what she would play? No, because she, she wasn't there. She would play paparazzi. Oh, this weekend was so much fun. Got to play so many fun games and show you guys these games that were coming. But something I didn't really get to talk about too much is I we did go all together as a big group. It was really awesome. Me, Kim, Bob, Hannah, Scoot, Fried Biscuits, E, we all went. And one of my favorite memories of the whole weekend was Thursday night. We had all just driven and flown and trained in, but we wanted to hang out and play some Valorant. I don't talk about this much on YouTube. If you watch me on Twitch, you know about it, but we all play Valorant very often. And we all walked over to PAX and we lined up on their crappy little <laughs> setups. They weren't too bad, but it was tough adjusting to them. The headphones definitely sucked. We couldn't hear a thing. We were all lined up there playing some Valorant and we lost, <laughs> but it was still, just a nice time, you know, leading up to the weekend, uh, struggling with all that anxiety. Kim and I didn't think we could sit on a massive show floor like that and just play games and feel relaxed, but we did. And it was a really fun time and I appreciate my friends, but I also appreciate all of you. And I appreciate all of the indie teams that brought their games out. I'm sorry I didn't get to play all of them. I feel like I played a lot and I got to meet some really cool people. And I gotta tell you, talking about these indies, reviewing them and getting excited for them is one of my favorite things that I do here on YouTube. YouTube and with my career in general. Thank you for watching the video and uh, I'm gonna go back to PAX next year. Okay, bye. Mwah. Play the games, buy the games, wish list the games. They're probably also all definitely on Steam if you wanna play them on your Steam Deck. I'm getting dragged out of here by, by myself. Okay, bye. See ya, bye.